Hi everyone, um, today in this session, in this tutorial, we will help you to understand where the difference, uh, different operations uh, available in DocuFossor. So we're going to do the manipulation, the modeling and the grading of a terrain using these different components, as you can see. So the first differentiation is the, which is quite important to make it clear is the different type of operations that we have. We have the absolute ones and we have the relative ones. So in the relative ones is whatever, it doesn't matter where you have a point, a region, a surface or um, a curve. Um, it doesn't matter what is the height. So the set value, it will just generate a modification of the terrain um, based on the value or the height of each value of each pixel, okay, uh, in the or each face in the mesh. But um, the absolute, it is quite important to know what is the height and the specific location of the curve, as well as the point or surfaces or 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 fee or um. Uh, curves or polylines. So that's why is the main difference between these two operations. And I will show you quickly um, how to do and how they how different they look to each other. So um, <clears throat> we'll start first important the DDM. We already know how to do this from the uh, previous um, video. Uh, first, we need to have uh, import an ASCII or an XYZ. Remember that when importing XYZ, um, Files you need to rotate the grid. Uh, in when you import an ASCII file or ASC file, you don't have it, that sort of problem. Then we have to use the grid shift, this located here, and the grid mesh, and then we we'll can use the custom visualizer just to have it here uh, on display in the canvas. So let me just close this quickly. I'll reduce that app. Um, so you can see here the high level of detail. This is a DTM or DM of one meter resolution. So you can see a high, quite a good amount of detail. Now we're going to start doing operations with points. So the first is cutting point. We're going to add it there. And the other is, this is um, a absolute. We are going to start with the absolute. Then we're going to start with the relative. So you can see the differences. Then. For this, we're going to need the docofos or um, list, but I will, I will do this first like this. Um, we're going to connect here. So it will take a little bit, a while just to connect and do this. Okay, now we need to define a point. So we just add a point component. We connect it. And now we are going to draw a point. Let's imagine it's here, one point. So this point is somewhere there in the, it's better to use the top view. Um, so we can see where it is the point located. So let's let's put it here in the middle of the, this part of the model. Okay, so we have our point there. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? Um, because, that is what I want to show you the differences between both operators. We we create another one, and sorry, we add it here. We disconnect this, and so we now set the point. We set this point. It will take a little bit, okay. And now we set this point again, the same point, okay. So now we have defined this. We can hide all these visualizations. Okay, this also will take out the preview. Once we have done this, what we need to do is just after this, we are going to define the slope, which is the angle. Okay, um, and then we can add we have to define our distance. So for the angle, we, we use angle. We can use either a number, say forty five degrees. Okay, or we can use um, in the parameters, um, there is a control called control knob uh, to define different parameters. Okay, so we need to just simply 
um, did them, the range value and the number of decimals. But just now to make it faster, we are going to use a 45 degrees, correct? And then we're going to define a distance, which can be uh, 50 meters. Okay, now we connect there. So now it's the operation should be ready to visualize. So for the visualization, we need again this grid mesh. Um, I'm gonna connect here. Now we're gonna turn off this preview and copy the whole bunch of components. And then we're gonna turn on the preview. Um, so you can see here what it happened. What happened here is the rate of hole because it's an absolute operation. So the point makes, uh, depending on the height, it will, what it's gonna do is um, it's gonna drag all the information 45 degrees. So first it calculates the 45 degrees of slope and then interpolates that with the, uh, with the point. So what we're gonna do here is just to modify the height. Let me change a little bit the angle. Uh, let's say there. As you can see, it takes <clears throat> quite a bit to do this calculation. So there are different techniques that you can... Oh, sorry, this is a cut, so it should be below the surface. Okay, so this is... If this happens is because the operator we use is not cotton fill or fill, it's just cut. So it, it has to cut um, a volume from the surface. So this is the, something that happens sometimes that you, you may move this above the surface and it is not going to calculate any operation because this is simply uh, cutting, is cutting material. So <clears throat> this is what is happening, okay, when it's an absolute operation. Now we're going to move this to the other operator and now we're gonna to connect the operator and we need also to calculate this is the maximum depth and again angle so we're gonna copy the angle here um sorry i made a mistake here we just drag it like this yeah the angle the slope and the distance maximum depth. So now that we have this, we disconnect here and we need to connect once again with the docker fossil list and connect once again here with the mesh. It should appear here. So this is what we got. Now let's, I want to show you this. If you choose other point, let's imagine this point, set one point, and we click enter. It doesn't matter what it is the height of this point, the operation simply will it should make a hole. So this point it is somewhere somewhere here. Look. So let's move it over here. Now, you may notice that, that's what I wanted to say before, that um, um, it's take quite a while to do this operation. And that is happening because of the high resolution. So one way that you can do is, as I explained before in other tutorial, is just to filter. That means reducing a little bit the resolution. And for that, you need to go to the docker fossil again <clears throat> and go to the grid filter. So... The grid filter needs this connection. And so we're going to filter and we are going to connect to each of these components. Here and here. At the beginning, it doesn't look different. Um, so we're going to put here a number, which is the number of um, cells um, that it will jump for the calculation, it will, it will be the new resolution or the new grid size. It will be two. 
It's recalculating everything. It should be. So now you can see it's, it's slightly faster. Now we're going to hide these connections to make it much cleaner. OK. So what we have is that if we increase the grid, let's say there, to 3, the operations may happen much faster. You may see you 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 can see this smoothing effect on the surface. Okay, so maybe four is too much, maybe two is enough for what we want to do. The other strategy is just create a crop of that region and then so it's not calculated for the rest of the rest. Okay, so now we, we play with these values. So let's imagine let's increase the maximum depth to 75 or 175. So you see how it grows. It considered the 45 degrees, but the height doesn't make any difference. Just the X and Y. Okay, but in the other case, it makes a big difference. Okay, so we can also change the distance of distance of influence. 71, sorry, and the slope. So you can see the differences between these operators. Okay, so that's basically hot with uh, points. You have other ones where are filled with points, which is exactly the same process, but just, just completely the opposite. So again, we can use the same point, correct? Um, we can copy these values over here. Sorry, this is the point, the wrong connection. We disconnect here, correct? And so we want to have, this is the angle, and this is our distance. And we are gonna move these visualizers over here. Connect. And we... So what's going on here? That our point, which is here, is not doing anything because this is a field operation, so we have to move it up. So now what it's going to do is it's going to appear uh, here. Um, small hill let's say okay so now what we do is we can do the same with the field point here and we use this point over here to connect and we copy these two slide numbers here the maximum height and the, the slope and we also connect and we make it this all. Now let's move these operators here, the visualizers, and so we come here. So as you can see now here, the operation. Okay, so that's the difference between the relative and the absolute. The absolute, sorry, on my left, and this the um, relative on the right. Okay, so these are the operations with um, points. Now we can do something with the curves to make it more interesting. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to delete this part. I'm going to group these for the visualization so it's much easier to move them all together. Now, um, all of these were with points. Now we're going to do it with, with lines. And let's use the cotton field path because you understand already the logic of cotton and field separate, but the cotton field is a completely different one. And one can use also here, uh, we don't have here cotton and field as a relative. Makes sense. And I will show you why. So let's go with the cotton field and the curve. Um, what we need here is information again. The doc or list comes from here. 
that we can make um we can connect this at the very end it's a good idea so we don't spend time just it's a good strategy just to start in all the parameters and then later we just connect this of us or at least otherwise we will internalize a lot of the processes we add a lot of processes here then we just move this visualizer over here disconnect our mesh here so now we start we need to define a curve um so we need to define a curve so let's go to the top view it's the best way to work different ways which you can generate a curve you can generate a curve from points and then interpolate the points so you can just write up a curve directly and i want to draw a curve that starts in this side and let's say move towards this side Okay, if we go to the perspective, the curve is there. Uh, let's modify some of the points of this curve to make it more interesting. Okay, and here we also do something like that. To make it more interesting okay so we have a curve also that increases in height now this is the cotton field path so in the cotton field path we need this curve so we just add that and set one point set multiple you can set multiple curves as well and we come here and then it use other information like the width that's the width on top of the heel of the at the bottom of the top of the operation, I will just put 10 meters for now. We need the slope again, it can be 30, um, 60 degrees. And the interesting part here is like we have the option to choose in the line between these two options, which is the slope on the left side or both sides, or the slope angle of the right side of the curve. If you leave it empty, um, it will use this number and will apply for both sides of the curve. Let's leave it like that. And then we are gonna add our distance that can be 100 meters. Our, um, this is the maximum cotton distance, okay? And we now connect the docker phosphor list we hide this thing and then we just connect it to the mesh and here is when i'm going to preview where is the preview um yeah so this is what is going to happen because it's an absolute so we need to be very careful um what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this yeah. so this is the operation cotton field as you can see there are parts of the curve that are above the level or the ground level of the terrain so you will see these steep area there are some parts are under the ground underground so you cut that area and this is the field and that happens along all, all along the curve so what you have here is a very interesting operation. So if you modify this curve, let's imagine that you grab the, this point and you bring it up. Let's be exa this exaggerated, of course. So you will see that operation will fill all that part. Just let me choose control set. So that it is the magic behind, behind the cotton field. Now let's do the same. Now let's use simply this one, which is cotton path. So the cotton path is a similar situation. We just grab our curve and we grab all these sliders. So this is the maximum depth from the top. Then we use here double B, which is the wide at the bottom. 
So we need another slider, in fact, here. Need a couple of extra more. So there, one, two, twenty. 20. Then we need the angles, and then the maximum distance. So we're gonna reduce. And so we move this over here, connect. And we make it. And so now we are connecting here. As you can see, the operation is completely different. In this case, it just calculated depth. So our maximum depth is 10 meters. So there is a calculation between this point and this point. Is this should be 10 meters. Okay. And so it, that's calculated all along the curve, but from the ground point. So you just carve or you just cut okay, along this path. So very different visualization compared to the previous one, in which we just have the cut and fill. Okay. And so we can do the same with other operators, like cut and fill indistinctly, okay? Um, we use the fill on path, which is a different one, which is this one here. Uh, we're gonna use again these values. Let me hide this thing. We use the same curve. We use um, maximum height. Uh, we use a uh, multi, which is a uh, script input. Is the width as well? Okay, we can use twenty. Now I want to have two slopes, so let's go. Let's make one slope twenty, sixty degrees, and let's make the other one twenty degrees. And our distance as well. So now we move this one here so that's what happened we have one it generated this awkward um corner because we have one at 60 degrees left side and another one at 20 degrees so this awkward um is that is where two two sides of the of the curve uh, find each other um, happens when we have uh, very drastic differentiations between the internal and external. So let's try to change this slightly a little bit so it will reduce that upward um, corner. As you can see here, this is the fill. And so the fill, it's, it's exactly the 10 meters we define it. This goes all along the curve. It's the 10 meters from the ground value. Okay. We want to reduce this, so we just reduce the this width. Let's reduce it to six, or even to three, or even to zero. No, zero doesn't work. Let's keep it in one. So you see there's one meter here on the top. So this is another of the operations, okay? So let me turn off all of this and save. Okay. So now the next step is just doing it the same, but we are gonna use some fill with a surface. So we can create it here. So already you know, so we need a surface. So instead of a line, we just create a surface. It can be any type of surface. Can be a generative surface, something that you have done before. Can be a triangular surface, whatever. So here is our surface. I'm gonna bring it a little bit up. I'm trying to bury part of the surface, and so we can see the differences. Okay, this is the cotton field with surface. Uh, we connect again our Fossil list. Now we need is a surface here. We set one surface connected there, and we need a slope. 
and we need the distance here. So then we just come here, we connect the local side. So you will see here the operation. Let me turn off this one. So you see the operation and then is the surface. It's an interesting thing. So now we are going to move these things here. We're gonna do one here, which is just the cut or fill. Notice the difference. Um, here is very interesting. You don't use a surface. You use just simply. This doesn't matter. You, this surface can be uh, also a progressive sur uh, surface, not a flat surface. So you can have some. Can be a loft, for example. A uh, loft the surface. So here we use is different. We use a curve. So it can be a polyline, and we just copy this here just to save some time uh, maximum distance sorry it's the slope and uh, maximum distance we just put it like that so we just connect from here um so well, let's move this So what is the issue here? There is one issue. Oh, we haven't selected the curve. So what happened is we go to the top. Let's draw one plane here. Maybe, maybe here. And so we define. Now it should work. So you see here. This is the area that has been cut. The field works exactly the same that opposite. So this is how basically these are the basic operations that you can do with Cofosor, but we have a couple of extra ones that I wanted to show you quickly. And one of those is <clears throat> the noise. Okay, so the noise is a slightly different one. What is gonna do is gonna generate noise um based using the purling noise uh, algorithm so let's think about in this way let's move this point to this part okay under the surface okay a little bit under the surface now so what we're going to do is we need to define a curve and uh, we need to define a uh, connect um, the docker phosphor list. We are going to define a wavelength. We're going to define an amplitude and the smoothness as well. Now what we're going to do is, in order to generate the, the curve, we, it can be an irregular curve, it can be a polyline, whatever you want. But let's imagine we, we, we want to create a circle. So we just put, we use the circle. Oh, sorry. The circle with a um, center. It's better if we use um, this type of circle, okay? So, what we need is for this circle, which is gonna be our curve, we need a plane or base plane, and we need a radius. So, we just need a point here that is gonna become our plane. And so we have this one here, okay? And then we're gonna have a, radi a radius, which is 50 meters. Let me move this over here. Okay. So that's our circle, see? Um, maybe it's better just to show it on top of the surface. So it's easy. So we can increase this a little bit more to make it more interesting. There. Okay. Once we have done that, we need to define the wavelength. So for the wavelength, we can just start with this number and then play and see how is the differentiation between all of them. And then we need the smooth, we can do two. Okay, so let's 
So that's the noise, and then now we need the docker false or list from here. And we're gonna hide this. So with the docker false or list, now we're gonna bring our mesh. We're gonna connect. So what you see here is the noise that is generated on top of the surface, okay? Sinusoidal noise. So if we increase the wavelength, noise becomes blurry, bigger waves. Um, so this is the amplitude. So the default is for, let's see what happens when you reduce the amplitude. It becomes softer. If we increase the amplitude of the curve, it will become much, much more evident all the undulations. Okay, so it's like the amplitude of a wave. We want something softer perhaps there. Okay, and then we have our smoother. So we can make it much smoother or sharper. Okay, let's leave it there. So it's a very soft and smooth surface now. As you can see. And if we modify the radius, this will increase or decrease. Much smaller. So let's let's make one radius of say 200 meters. Should be at least big. Correct, correct. So we added a lot of noise here. Okay, so let's save this. Now, let's try with another generative method, which is the geometric display using a sign formula. So we just can borrow this circle. And so we connect with the docker fossil later. Um, we can, we need here other parameters, which is one is the wavelength. We can have similar wavelength. We have amplitude as well. So perhaps, Perhaps um, we can reduce our amplitude. And we need also our smoothness, okay? So there it is. So we just move this one here. Uh, we need to connect to the docker fossil list. And hide this. Now what we're gonna do is just connect there see what happens. It's a completely different type of generative surface. So it respects more the normal uh, the angles and the contours. It just modified like a creating a texture is an interesting thing to do and try. Uh, perhaps this is the most interesting one for me. It will depend on, on you and the, and the objectives of your manipulation of the terrain. Now, if you want to export this terrain, there's something interesting. You can export this terrain in two ways, because that's the next step and say, okay, I generated this. So you can bake it, okay? We bake it, and so we have here the surface. Let's go to shade it so you can see it. Um, go to art, artistic sorry or arctic let's go to arctic so it's just because it's white as you can see here a little bit of the textures okay so this is one way and then we just can manipulate these things but there are other options and very interesting one is we can transform all of these into grid points so what we're gonna do is we need to calculate the grid points. Okay, we go here. Oh, sorry, it's my mistake. We connect from here. So we have here the grid, grid points, look. Okay, and once we have done this, we have points. We can export X, Y, Z export as 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 a, 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 a S C point as well. Um, 
If we use like this, we don't need to generate the grid points. We just connect directly here to export. And F is just the name of the file. And W is the Boolean toggle. So let's try this. So we need the Boolean toggle here. So now it's false. And so here is the name of the file. Um, file will be dtm edited. Oh, sorry, we need a panel. And inside the panel, we're going to put dtm edited. That's all what we need. So when we turn on this, it should export an ASC file. So it's, it's saving. Um, and we just need to find that in our terrain. It should be here. It should be somewhere here. So it will take a while for this to happen, but once it happens, you need to go to your the folder where you have saved a grasshopper definition, and it will appear here the ASC file. So now, if we open Cloud Compare, we can we we can visualize that ASC file. So we just need to open it, go to the docofoser. Um, so we need to apply it everywhere. Uh, some something where maybe there was a wrong exportation. Let me importation. Sorry. Let me try opening this with Notepad to analyze it. It seems correct to me. So what we can do is again import no something is wrong so here is where it is the problem use comma as decimal character uh -huh. the red part is showing you issues this information that we use this this or space there's no separator there is there is a problem here so let me think of the problem perhaps let's copy and paste it is let's create a number here number one it's because this as he has this no data value and we just save it. And then we just go here and we just open it. We still have problems with the translation. So I don't know why. I found what was the problem. The problem is that the SC is not properly read. So what we're gonna do instead of exporting an SC, we're gonna export an XYZ. So we'll do the similar process. We just add F. We just need to toggle these to false. Connect the DXF here. Okay, and then turn it on to true. So the information should be written here slowly. Um, the next way set is already written. So what we're gonna do now, we go to the I'll compare. We open the XYZ. You can see there is no error here. Okay. And we just need to do apply to all, just to all, and then the information will appear there. This is the model. We modify it previously with all the noise in this corner. Um, so basically, that is what is so solve the problem. This is, this is what I wanted to show in this tutorial. It was a slightly longer, but um, I hope it's very useful because 
um, you may be able to do multiple manipulations and finally export your um, product either to Grasshopper for further analysis and manipulation or you can export it to visual to visualize it in, in cloud compare so that's all thank you very much